I'm Dr. Susan Giovanni from Wichita, Kansas. I'm here to talk to you today about risk factors for coronary vascular disease. Coronary vascular disease includes heart attack and stroke and peripheral vascular disease. It's a problem with the blood vessels in the body. Risk factors are many and some can be controlled and modified and others we can't do much about. For instance, I can't do anything about my genetics. If my family history has a lot of heart attack or stroke in it, then that's what I've got to live with. But I can control my weight, I can control my blood sugar, I can control my cholesterol, I can control my stress levels, I can control how I sleep or don't sleep, I can control my weight, and I can control how much I exercise separate from my weight. Let me look at a couple of different things here for you. Let's talk about smoking, for instance. There's no medicinal purposes for smoking. Anyone that smokes is increasing the risk of a heart attack or stroke in a coronary vascular event. So the bottom line is anyone that smokes needs to get off the cigarettes. And now the latest studies have not only looked at the smoker, but the one exposed to secondhand smoke, and now we're looking at tertiary smoke exposure. For instance, the smoke that hangs on the furniture and the drapes and the walls and the risks associated with exposure to that. So smoking is something that can be controlled. It's a very, very difficult subject. But there are great medications. There's biofeedback. I've seen people use acupuncture even for it. So there's a lot of different things that we can do to quit smoking, but we've got to quit smoking. The other thing is our alcohol use. Now, fortunate for those of us who like to drink, a small amounts of alcohol have been proven to improve our vasculature. They do reduce some oxidation and inflammation in the blood vessels. Unfortunately, in our typical American fashion, what we've done is taken a good thing way too far. We're talking about a few ounces a day of alcohol. And a lot of those studies were done on red wine, though some people believe that alcohol of any kind, a couple of ounces a day, does help. So just bear in mind that there are risks of alcoholism when people drink, and we never know which person is going to have that problem. So using alcohol as a means to reduce your risk for coronary vascular disease is probably not a great idea, especially if you have family history of alcoholism. But if you do like to have a drink here and there, especially red wine, has been proven to be helpful. Stress. Stress is something that some people think they cannot control, but that is just not true. There are some jobs that are more stressful than others, but everyone's got to have a plan for how to relieve stress. What are we going to do uh, to help ourselves feel better, get our blood circulating, get our brains cleared of all the cobwebs, uh, get our body? I have actually counseled people to quit their job. Now, in my defense, let me tell you, too, that I have also counseled people to get their job back. Because I've had people retire from work, and they just were not ready to retire. They didn't have a plan. And they didn't have anything to do. They got bored, and they came to. They would come to see me every month or every other month for months on end until I finally figured out what's different here. Oh, you're not working anymore, and I have nothing to do except bug me. You know, you need a job. Why don't you get your job back or find a great volunteer position that's very rewarding for you, a little more laid back, a little less stress than what you were doing before, but something that can make you feel good about yourself. Speaking of feeling good about yourself. One of the best ways to do that is to learn how to forgive. People are people. We're human. We're not God. We are going to make mistakes. So all of us need to learn how to forgive each other. If someone has slighted us, or injured us in some way, our holding them to a grudge on that matter is not going to do them any harm whatsoever. It might deprive them of our friendship, but honestly, they may not need or want that friendship, so that's done very little to them. But it, what, what it will do to us is raise our blood pressure, raise our endorphin levels. It could disturb our sleep. It could change our eating patterns. certainly will change our behaviors. And all of that puts us at risk for other diseases, including coronary artery disease. You know, there, there are things that most people think about when they think about reducing their risk for heart attack or stroke cholesterol, high blood pressure, we named some of them earlier, but there are things like learning to be a forgiving person, learning how to laugh, learning how to play hard and enjoy ourselves that can really change our life, 
help us to feel better, help us to live longer, and help us to avoid some of these horrible chronic illnesses that could lead to an early end to our life. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Have a great day.